everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor. Excited to get started with our weekend house calls. This is where I sit down with your questions, literally reading them right off a Word document on my computer. My team is nice enough to grab them all from the Ask Cabral webpage where people submit them. And I literally just sit down, I kind of digest the questions and read them to you, of course, if they're not too long. And then I'm happy to give you my answers from a clinical perspective, what I see every day, every week in my practice. But not only that, I mean, I can only see obviously so many people every week. But the nice thing is that also I get to read over, I would say at least 50 other labs a week from 50 other people, right? And so all those other people might be ordering from the online store. They might just, you know, a health coach might be asking me questions, whatever it might be. And and really me reading functional medicine lab tests is almost a dream come true or not almost, it is. That's, you know, kind of like when I got sick, if I could have chosen the ideal job for me would be to help others in my same position. I just didn't really believe as an 18, 17, 18 year old kid from Medford, Massachusetts, that, that that would ever happen. I just didn't believe that that would be in the cards. And you couldn't even convince me that at 23, 24 years old. It's just something started to switch. You know, little by little, I gained more experience. I, you know, really moved up my field in terms of nutrition, nutritional consulting, exercise, personal training, strength and conditioning. And then I said, okay, well, you know, I just did it in this field. Why not? do it in, in the other fields that I, I love as well, which is essentially you know natural health, functional medicine, everything that goes along with that. So this is a real blessing for me and just fortunate enough to be able to, to read your questions and, and hopefully provide a little bit of advice as well. So let's get started. The first question today is from Luis. Luis is asking, Dr. Paul, I'm so very grateful to have found you. You and your team do outstanding work from your clinical expertise to your podcast to your excellently laid out website and user-friendly instructions for treatment protocols. I'm starting my seven-day detox and will continue on with your Candida protocol. Here's my question. I tend to have soft, peeling fingernails that break easily. What do you think about collagen, silica, and biotin supplementation? Luis, great question. I didn't even know this was coming in, but it's perfect timing. Yesterday on episode 791, I talked about vitamin H, also called vitamin B7, also called biotin. You would be one of those candidates who could actually get a lot of benefit from short-term, higher dosage use of biotin, typically 5,000 micro, not milligrams, micrograms, smaller, right, per day for anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks. Again, I can't give you specific health recommendations. I can give you suggestions. I can give you things that I would probably do myself, but I can't make specific medical recommendations. I just want everyone to know that, right? I can't diagnose disease. I can't provide medical devi- uh, medical advice, not devices. I uh, can't do that either. That's what this Cabral House Call is all about, saying, okay, this is what I do every day in my practice. We've done hundreds of thousands of appointments with wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging. I want to share that experience with you. So that's what I would start with. Short collagen, amazing as well, but really, what are you looking at? Okay, should you supplement with all of these things? Sure. Short term, no problem. What's going on most likely? Poor absorption. You're probably eating great food, but you're not absorbing it through your gut. So hopefully you've run an organic acids test. You've run a hair tissue mineral analysis. That will give you your vitamin levels and the hair tissue will give you your mineral levels. You might not just be absorbing. You might really just need to load up on um, one or two of the daily nutritional supports per day. So you kind of get like double the nutrients. And you will want to just kind of heal and seal and strengthen your gut. That would be kind of like foundational. But at the same time, could you do extra vitamin C, CalMag Complete, Zinc, Collagen, Biotin? Absolutely. Of course. Of course you could do that. And I think they would all be great. So that's my advice to you. And um, this is the first time I'm announcing it. We actually have a collagen formula in the works. This is not any ordinary collagen, meaning like I've recommended Great Lakes Collagen before, other brands. Those are really great protein collagen formulas. And, and I think they're great. So again, never discounting the recommendations I made in the past. We will only create, I will only formulate a product for equilibrium nutrition if it's different and a step up from what's out there. Okay. So here's the deal. I don't want to talk about it too much today, but, that, but I'm pretty excited about it. This new formula has the best research behind it. Again, I didn't do the research. What I said was, here's the research. Here's the patented formula. Now, again, it's not like a medical pharmaceutical patent, but anybody can get this patent if they want to actually use it for manufacturing. 
but that's what was used in the research. And it's not a protein collagen. So it doesn't have a ton of animal protein in it, which I love as well, but you get way more. Like I'm going to show you the research, way more of the benefits for the hair, skin, and nails. So you're not going to take this as a protein. You're going to take it as a rebuilding tool. That's what I'm so excited about. And actually, I'm already using it right now because, of course, I get advanced for my own formulas, right? I get to use them myself and, and then have um, the health coaches and the other people in my practice get to use it first. So super excited about that. But of course, use collagen products right now. I'm just really excited about the one that we have coming out soon. We're going to do a really a small manufacturing run on that. Just you know, let people use it and you know, get them, let them enjoy it, and we'll go from there. So all right, Ruchi is up next, R-U-C-H-I. And they write in, hi, I'm looking for children candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol for my son. My son's six years old and is expected to have candida yeast overgrowth. And based on the reviews from my other moms, I'm hoping that your protocol will help him. I'm in based in the Netherlands and will not may not be allowed to order products from the US. Do you have a branch in Europe where we can order? Please advise. Thank you. Okay. Great question. Unfortunately, we can't ship to Europe. I'm sure that you know that we have a children's candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. We use it with kids with all sorts of bacterial-based issues in the gut. I'm not going to name them all right now, but you know what they are, right? All the learning-based issues, all of the other emotional, mental-based issues. We're not saying that they treat those because I can't say that, but what we do is we help kids get tremendous results, start at the slowest possible dosage, and work up from there. We will eventually be able to ship to Europe. We'll actually be able to ship to 22 more countries than the US, Canada, UK, and Australia where we ship now. We hope to be able to do that in approximately six months' time. Of course, I don't want you to have to wait six months for your son. So what you can do is look at the products that I offer on stephencabral.com forward slash store under supplements. And it would be the children's candida protocol, candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. See if you can find those overseas through a functional medicine doctor. If you can, you're good to go. If you can't, see if you can get a friend in the US, in Canada, the UK, or Australia to get the products and then ship them personally to you. We just can't do it. That's all. So hopefully that helps. And we have a lot of people do that just to let you know. They do it with our CBD oil. They do it with other stuff that we can't ship overseas. They can choose to. We just can't. Okay. Andrea is up next. Andrea is asking, Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've struggled with constipation for years now. And after trying several protocols, elimination diets, x-rays, etc., I still can't figure out the root cause. My question is this. Can a tight hip flexor or abdominal muscle impair digestive function? When I palpate my lower left quadrant, it feels dense and ropey. And I can't tell if I'm feeling a strained muscle or part of the sigmoid colon. Thanks so much for any help you provide. I love your podcast. I've learned so much. I continue to learn more each day. All right. So, well, the truth is this, that when someone orders our constipation protocol, they also get our constipation, like ways to eliminate constipation PDF, which I believe is like 10 different ways. It's pretty fantastic. And here's the deal though. Tight muscles, and I've answered this before. So just go to steamcrawl.com forward slash podcast and type in constipation. I've answered this, so you'll be able to see it uh, multiple times. But yes, tight muscles can definitely cause constipation, namely a tight psoas, right? You asked about your hip flexor, for sure. But you always have to ask, why is the psoas so tight? You know, there's a lot of people who sit down during the day. You're not the only person, right? So why is your psoas so tight? Are you doing a lot of biking? Well, okay, maybe that could tighten it up more. That's, that's for sure. Or even rowing, that, that could do it. Certain types of exercise. But it's hardly ever talked about. But what else can tighten up your muscles and especially the psoas as well? Fear anxiety, high levels of stress, nervousness. Okay, think about that. Fear, anxiety, super high levels of stress, nervousness. They can all lock up the psoas and other muscles. They can also lock up the colon. They can lock up the intestines by, they don't lock it up. They actually just don't allow for the normal peristaltic movements, which means just kind of like the, well, what's the best way to call that? Like an accordion, right? The accordion movement in your intestines that you never really feel, it moves the stool all the way from, you know, through your entire small intestine, like 21 to 23 feet, and then through the last five to six feet of, of your colon. Okay. So that's your large intestine. And it does that automatically, right? It does that with when you're in a relaxed state, that parasympathetic nervous state. So we need to do both lifestyle for you and we need to do a little bit of nutritional supplements and diet in the beginning. Okay. So lifestyle, what would that be? Well, it'd be like things like Epsom salt baths and it would be maybe different light therapy if you want to get into that, maybe some acupuncture, meditation. If you type into my podcast page, you can type in constipation massage. I actually teach you how to do a constipation massage. That would help. Then of course, the supplementation, we have the constipation protocol. Remember, you can do the constipation protocol before bed and upon waking, and you can add 
things such as prunes to your daily nutritional support smoothie in the morning. And you can increase water. What else can you do? Um, You can use triphala after meals. I mean, there's so much you can do before resorting to harsh laxatives. So Andrea, that's the best place to get started. I hope that helps. Always happy to do a follow-up as needed. Yes, that's it. That's what I would do. And again, if you were looking for a lab recommendation from me, for you, I would run the thyroid adrenal hormone lab for sure to look at those stress levels. If that's a little too expensive, then run the hair tissue mineral analysis. Okay. Anonymous is up next. Anonymous is asking, hi, Dr. Ball. Thank you for answering my question on herpes simplex virus and the CBO protocol. I'm early into my second pregnancy. I was wondering if the high full spectrum vitamin C, full spectrum magnesium, and reishi powder are safe throughout pregnancy. I take your orthomolecular prenatal and the iron response. If so, at what dosages? After emergency cesarean first pregnancy, I've contemplated a planned cesarean this go-around. However, I also have a fear of possible outbreak the time of birth. Any recommendations for delivery? OB and uh, want to put me on Valtrex. Let's see. Less important, but curious. If the virus can be eradicated, why would arginine foods still sometimes trigger it? Okay. Uh, you know what? Here's the deal. I, I think... Um, these questions are probably four or five weeks old. I apologize. Obviously, there I'm a little late getting them. Check out episode 760. That is the episode I'm gonna I'm gonna move you towards. So episode 760 actually talked about how to destroy, eradicate, and stop viruses from replicating. That gives you exactly what to do. I don't even think I really need to elaborate, but let me answer the first questions. Okay. So what would I like to do for vitamin C? Well, I love vitamin C and the full spectrum vitamin C, in my opinion, should be fine because there's no herbal adaptogenic herbs in it that would be for the adrenals. They're just vitamin C-based herbs. So I'm okay with that. It's also only one gram per day, one in the morning, one at night. You could also, if you wanted an herb-free, which I'm usually herb-free with most women during pregnancy, I would do the um, alkalizing vitamin C and, and you can just do a half a scoop. Like that's it. That would give you one and a half grams approximately of vitamin C. That could work great. It can also help with some constipation if needed. It would, and it would certainly help with viruses as well. Although I do have to say that a lot of times for viruses, I'm using ascorbic acid. So I just want you to know that it is something that I do because ascorbic acid seems to actually help with viruses more than the alkalizing versions, but they're both great because what does vitamin C do? Boost your immune system. So we have that. Would I use reishi powder throughout pregnancy? I would not. Reishi powder is amazing. I love reishi powder. It's one of the few, if only, really adaptogenic powders that can even be used, believe it or not, during the CBO protocol but I never say that. And I would not recommend it because it just gets too complicated what mushrooms to use, what not to, because they're yeast, they're fungi, so we don't use them. Uh, Rishi though, amazing for allergies and balancing the immune system. Would I want to use it during pregnancy? No, for that very reason. Your body actually changes the immune system during pregnancy. Not a lot of people know that, but it's one of the reasons why sometimes you get an autoimmune issue while pregnant, and sometimes your autoimmune issue actually goes away while pregnant and comes back when you're not because your immune system changes. Why does it change? So that your body, your innate immune response, your humor, humoral immune response is not attacking that fetus grown inside of you. That's not you, right? So it's kind of not you and your body doesn't want to attack it. So it knows. So hopefully that was helpful. Check out episode 760 because zinc and vitamin C, those are great things that you can be using right now. And um, high arginine foods. Well, here's the thing. If the virus goes dormant, you're keeping it low, but you're keeping your arginine foods very high. Well, that can feed the virus. I would rather you just balance your arginine with lysine-based foods. You should be totally fine as long as you don't go overboard on the arginine-based foods. And then I think in the future, you'll just know your triggers. Like for some people, chocolate's their trigger, right? So they just can't have chocolate or they can't have coffee or they can't have whatever it is, but they can eat all the other arginine-based foods. So kind of just understand the bioindividuality. And I think you'll do great. I mean, again, you do. You can use the daily nutritional support or the prenatal that you're using right now, which is great. You're using the food-based iron, which is amazing. And I would just say, um, well, you're getting the omega-3 support with your prenatal. I think you're doing great. So keep up the great work. Anonymous is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Accounting, ac- accounting, it should be according, just a little typo, no big deal. Uh, it's from Anonymous, so I can joke around a little bit. Hi, Dr. Brawl. According to the arginine lysine list on episode 273, Someone with herpes simplex V, herpes simplex virus, it should be however herpes simplex virus 2, should also avoid blueberries. Is this one of the foods that I have every day in my smoothie as one of your recommendations? Pumpkin seeds are another healthy go-to. I have a couple times a week. And I even opt for the sprouted pumpkin seeds. Any suggestions? Okay. So great question. And I kind of just answered it on the last one. And I answered it for um, anonymous. Well, it could be the same person. 
You never know. So here's the deal. The deal is that you kind of follow my episode 760 on how to eradicate a virus. You get your body very healthy. You do the high dosage of vitamin C. You do the zinc. You do all of those things. And then you try to add one of those arginine foods at a time. I actually haven't had anybody react to blueberries. I have had people react to chocolate and and some of the other high arginine foods. So go to episode 273 if anybody's interested. Just go to episode stephencabral.com forward slash 273 for the arginine and lysine list if you're dealing with viral-based issues. Okay, viruses of any kind, but but especially herpes-based virus, you know, cold sores, general herpes, any, anything in, in general with herpes, I would even shingles, all of those things, okay? So check that out. And then, then if you're not having a flare-up, you haven't had a flare-up in three months. I, everybody in my practice, I ask them, I want to see no flare-up for 12 weeks, okay? No flare-up for 12 weeks, great. That virus is dormant or gone, and we're all happy. Introduce one of those foods one at a time, like one every, let's say, two weeks. Still feel good, and you don't feel any tingling anywhere around the lips, around wherever you might get a herpes-based outbreak, probably doing fine. Go on, live your life, enjoy. But remember, you know, remember that bioavailability or bioindividuality. Remember, some things might affect you more than others. I'll also tell you that, just letting you know, some people, it's not just arginine foods. They, they, their virus flares up with highly acidic-based foods. And I'm not saying these foods can't be healthy, meaning like I've seen people have viral flare-ups with eating pineapple and apples and kiwi and coffee. So remember, bioindividuality, see what foods affect you. Go back to my episode on how to create your own rotation diet. That was episode 754. If you haven't checked out stephencabral.com forward slash 754, one of the best episodes to literally figure out your health, figure out which food it triggers. Of course, I love the food sensitivity test, but go beyond that. Also create the rotation diet. I love that show. I hope that you'll check it out. All right. Next question is from Anonymous as well. Anonymous writes in, hi, Dr. Brawl. I have a question linking the gut, SIBO, and immunity. Stool tests have shown I have nil, meaning low, lactobacilli and bifidobacterium. I also have a leaky gut and I have an immune deficiency in the IgG. My question is, how do I restore balance in my gut when I don't seem to tolerate any probiotics due to relapsing SIBO? I've tried many. The only way I seem to keep SIBO in check is by staying on maintenance herbal protocols, prokinetics, and a strict-ish diet. I know this isn't helping to heal the gut though, yet all my symptoms, stomach spasms, nausea, return when I try to broaden my diet to introduce probiotics, fermented foods, etc. It's a vicious cycle. How would you suggest moving forward to heal the gut? Great question. Okay, so let me try to answer that for you. First, let's just make sure what's going on with your stomach because we're talking about the intestines and the bacteria there. SIBO and candida, they live in the intestines. That bacteria can come into the stomach. True, that, that, that's possible. But when I see stomach issues, nausea, and I see spasms, I'm thinking slow gut motility or I'm thinking H. pylori. So did your stool test do a three-day stool test? Anybody running one-day stool tests, please save your money, save up for a three-day stool test. I'll link up ours, but you can also do it with your own PCP or your own functional medicine doctor. Do a three-day. Not everyone catches everything with one stool sample. Remember, one stool sample. Try it for three days, okay? So H. pylori, check for that. If that's a negative, good. We're moving on then from H. pylori. Second thing, just slow gut motility. So if you've eliminated a lot of the bacteria and you've eliminated a lot of the yeast, well, then here's the other issue. When you put bacteria into your stomach through probiotics or fermented-based foods, you are still supposed to move those through the gut. They can't just lock up in one section. So what I'm recommending is actually speeding up digestion and bowel motility to a normal level. What would that be? Okay. It's making sure that you have one to two bowel movements per day. It's making sure that you are literally fully digested within three hours of eating that meal, like a full meal, like a lunch or a dinner. So that means using one or two enzymes, like one or two of the daily digestive enzyme, or or using, well, no, I shouldn't say or, and using something called betaine HCL or betaine and pepsin. I've got a great show on this as well. It's... um how to boost digestion and decrease bloating, 782. Check that out, stephencabral.com forward slash 782, because you can use ginger tea. You can use apple cider vinegar and water if that doesn't cause issues with the stomach, okay? Because it might. You can use bitters, digestive bitters. So I, I mentioned those as well. Those are all on that show. Check that out. That's episode 782. 
So yeah, we work with this every, literally every week in my practice. Some people have a lot of nervousness. We call it a nervous gut, right? And that means there's slower motility, which means we need to speed that up through adding in the BTNHCL, adding in sometimes a bile-based product, using the digestive enzymes, making sure that we're, we're getting that bowel motil- motility going, working a relaxation lifestyle-based methodology, such as the, the meditation, the yoga, the deep diaphragmatic breathing, all of those things. And, and I hope that helps because that really might be the answer you're looking for so that you don't have to maintain, a, maintain a, an oregano oil or a, a product like that to keep the, the bacteria low. So hopefully that helps. Let's see if we can get in one more question today. Andrew says, thank you so much for everything you do for us in humanity. You are an amazing soul. Thank you, Andrew. Beth, thank you for that. Quick question for you regarding a friend of mine. She bruises extremely easy all over and she has pretty severe menstrual cycles. No birth control, pretty healthy. I suggested she take the adrenal and hormone lab. She was also recently on Accutane for acne until I was finally able to question her enough where she ended up stopping at less than a month of use. Any advice is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Again, it goes back to detective work, really. Andrew, you gave me enough information. This is all I needed. You're asking for your friend. And the reason you're asking for your friend is that she bruises easily. You told me that she has severe menstrual cycles. It's kind of all I needed to know. So your friend is most likely losing a larger amount of blood on a monthly basis. Because of that, there are stores of iron, B vitamins, potentially vitamin C and magnesium are all going lower. Okay. I mean, it could be everything, vitamin K, like all of those things that would allow for the body not to bruise, okay? So what am I recommending? Well, I highly recommend she run the at least the adrenal hormone about five to seven days before she gets her period or run the, the thyroid adrenal. So thyroid adrenal hormone or a little less expensive would be the hormone, the adrenal hormone, okay? And the reason I recommend that is she, we, we might have to help her balance her hormone levels, okay? For naturally, of course. And then in the meantime, Let's have her use the food-based iron that we have on the website. That's a great one by Innate Response. Let's have her use one capsule of the active B complex with breakfast or lunch. Let's have her use the alkalizing vitamin C or the full spectrum vitamin C. And then let's also have her use the daily nutritional support shake once a day. That's it. Just use it for breakfast. Now, we also want to make sure though that she's not taking in too much omega-3s at this time. Because omega-3s can act as a little bit of a blood thinner. I don't think it's going to be a major issue, but I just want to make sure as she's losing a lot of blood, especially you know maybe during her menstrual-based cycle, if it is a heavy cycle, is that we might want to calm down the natural blood thinners as well. So Andrew, you're a great friend, of course. I appreciate you writing in. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Cabral Concept. I appreciate each and every one of your listens. I hope this show was helpful. Please feel free to pass it along to anyone maybe who's experiencing these same types of issues. And I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Thank you for just tuning in. I greatly appreciate your support. This month, my team and I had two last minute changes to our April special offer. Just days ago, we were literally without sufficient quantities of a product we wanted to give away free of charge, but we couldn't manufacture enough in time. So instead of crying over spilled coconut milk, we scrambled to come up with something we've never done before, but that we believed you'd enjoy. After a couple hours of brainstorming, the answer became obvious. What we decided to do was simply to give you $10 cash on us to spend on anything you'd like in our online store. There's no catch and no strings attached. We just want to give you $10 to spend however you'd like at stephencabral.com forward slash store. So instead of me making a recommendation for what I would love you to try, I want you to take $10 on us this month and apply it to whatever nutritional supplement, protocol, or lab test kit you feel best fits you. I'm truly grateful for how much this podcast and community has grown and it's the least I can do. So to take $10 off your next order, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash store and enter the promo code TAKE10 in your shopping cart at checkout. This is a limited time offer during the month of April 2018 and cannot be combined with any other promo offers. I hope you are able to take advantage of this special offer and thank you again for your support of the Cabral concept.